National Speakers Association, Carolinas chapter, where he received the Rising Star Award. Peter opened Peter A. Speaks in 2022 and currently goes on the road, giving keynotes and running workshops to groups, associations, and corporations. I know you're gonna have a fascinating time tonight. Please welcome Peter Ajil Basidis. Well, thank you, David. Great to see everybody here. Look at everybody. They're looking fresh. What a great group. Let me do a little sharing here of, hey, can you see that? Did I lose you? Say something, David. Just as I can see it. Okay, You're great. Good. All right. Awesome. I was a little worried there for a second. I'm gonna go in presentation mode and I'm gonna put you guys over here in the corner so I can look at you every once in a while. Let me blow that up. And so I got everything. I get clean there. Everybody's in there. Great. Well, thank you for coming for closing the sale from dire to distinguished. When I talked to uh, David, he said to me that the trio was out in Las Vegas. And what's not to like? What's not to like about Las Vegas, right? And he said they were having a conversation. They had an exercise with another group from. California, I think Silicon Valley, the, the Toastmasters out in Silicon Valley, they got together for a project and they said, we should do something on closing the sale. Because I think there's some, some, you know, like every Toastmasters group at this time of year, they're trying to get their numbers up so they can be distinguished. And a lot of times they're not there yet. So they got back and they said, we got to do closing the sale thing. And of course, David Link was called me because I'm real good at that. It's not that I was on the sales side all these years. I was on the buying side all these years. So I know what salespeople do. I know the tricks. I know what works and what doesn't work. Been doing it for 30 plus years. So I'm here to share some of that with you today. And there, put the three up. First of all, thank you for having me today. I know you can have anybody else come and do this but you asked me and I really appreciate it. Let's talk about the sandwich because that's what we do in Toastmasters, right? We talk about the sandwich theory. When we give, when we give evaluations, we do a little positive feedback and then we do constructive feedback in the middle and we do positive at the end. Today, I'm gonna take that piece of bread off the top and let's get the stuff, the bad stuff out of the way. Let's get through the bad news first, okay? Because when the district looks at things, they look at things differently, a little bit differently, but usually the same thing as the club. The club is trying to get distinguished. They have goals to meet. And then they can figure out if they're going to get there. Now, here's what I know. I think we got four months left. Till the, till the end of the Toastmasters year. So if we don't have enough members to be distinguished, that's a problem. So with four months left, what can we do to get to where we need to go? Now, here's one thing I do know after all my years of uh, working in advertising, working with millions of dollars, working at, looking at different proposals and everything, I know this. Always look at the numbers. They tell a story. Numbers never lie. They, they just don't. They don't know how to lie. They tell you what's actually happening. So let's look at District 117. Let's look at their club performance. And right now, to be distinguished, a club needs 20 plus members. And right now we have 25 who are considered distinguished. We need 41. And then when you look further down, clubs between 13 and 19 
there's 35 of those. Clubs between 8 and 12, there's 34 of those. And clubs under eight members, there's nine of those. Okay. Basically, what this says to me is about 26% of the total clubs are distinguished. I think that's a low number. I've been part of the district a long time. And I know there's always a rush at the end of the year, but I need to be concerned a little bit. And I did some research and everything, and I'm a, I'm a tad concerned. Because, and I was talking to David. I said, David, these numbers don't look that great. He says, yeah, I know. But he said, when you look at the other districts and what's going on, it's not that bad. It really isn't. And I said, wait a second. It's not good, but it's not that bad. Do you, do you, do you know what that means? That there's a word for that. It's called mediocrity. It, it's okay. I don't think it's okay. I think we got to put some fire underneath some people because it's not okay. If, if we're going to be mediocre, then when we get to the dis district conference in June or May or June, whatever it is, let's, let's change the awards. Let's give out certificates of mediocrity. Hey, not that great. Not that terrible. We're okay. It's, <laughs> it's not that bad. No, we can't do that. We're striving for excellence, not mediocrity. I'll give you an example of what happened to me when doing this. Uh, David came to me. He said, Let, can you do this uh, presentation? I said, yeah, sure. So I went out there and did my own research. Okay. And so what I did was I asked David, David, give me your three top clubs who are doing really well and your three worst clubs who are really not doing so great. I want to send them an email. I want to find out what's going on with them. What's what's happening? What do they think what the problems are? What What's going on? What's working? What's not working? That's what I wanted to find out. So I sent out six emails to, to membership VPs. Six emails. I only got one response back. That's a 16% response rate. That's that's not good. That's not good. So I said, David, I got a problem. Only one person got back to me. So he gave me three more of each. But the first time he gave me two, two, uh, two more good ones. So I had a total of eight. So I sent out another email. I sent out eight me emails to different VPs. I only received two responses back. That's a 25% response rate. Total response rate was 21%. That that's that's not good. Because my point is if I'm a prospect for a club, if I'm a prospect and I reach out to the VP of membership and I don't get a response back, what am I supposed to think? I'm not I'm not too thrilled about nobody answering me back. So I think that's a problem. And not not knocking anybody or anything like that. It's just it may went to spam. It could be another things around vacation. But the whole point is to that prospect, no response means they don't care. Now I want to go back to if you look at if you go to the uh, Toastmasters International website and see what's our mission. The Toastmasters International mission is we empower individuals to become more effective communicators and leaders. The district mission is to build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. There's that word again, excellence. And it says it down here too, in the core values, excellence. It doesn't say mediocrity, it says excellence, okay? So I think we have to really push a little bit on folks to say, hey, what you do out there in the marketplace makes a difference. I don't think that if you're if you're at work and people are sending you business emails, I think you respond to them. I think you should do the same thing for Toastmasters. That's kind of obvious. So 
Anyway, I want to I want to just say the V give a shout out to the three who got back to me. And that's Donald Barnes, Anthony Sloan, and Andres Guerrero. Now, these guys, their clubs are doing great. Go figure. They're doing something right. They're getting back to people. They're 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 making that connection. They're doing the things that they're supposed to do. That's why they're being pretty successful. Another thing is values. Two of these guys are military guys. They know the value of the retired military. They they're on top of things. They got they have goals. They got to, they got to meet them. There's expectations. They got to they got to follow through. So here's the thing. Mediocrity again. Do we want to be mediocre or do we want to be excellent? The difference between mediocrity and excellence is often a matter of effort. It's effort. Yeah, if you put in the effort, you'll be excellent. So folks, somebody sends you an email, reply back. What can I help you with? What do you need? And if you do that, members will join and we'll get to our numbers. Not a biggie. So anyway, David said, hey, we want, you to do the, the, we want you to do that sales thing. Because I've done the sales thing before. He's seen it before. And I always go back to when, when I talk about sales. It's called the Blake Method from Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. And if you've never seen the movie, you do know some of the nomenclature of the movie. And I'll go through a little bit of it. Uh, there's Blake. He's the trainer. He came in. These are... Real estate sales guys are trying to sell, sell swamp land over in, I don't know, Florida or Arizona or wherever it was. And, uh, and they're not doing so good. So they bring in the big guy to tell him what they do. And of course, and it's an all-star cast, Alec Baldwin, Jack Lemon. So as Jack Lemon goes for coffee, Blake says, put that coffee down because coffee's for closers only. So we want to be closers. We want to be closers. Now, there's an issue with that, okay? Because this, if you didn't know it, your VP of membership, you're in sales. Like it or not, it's a sales thing. You have to sell people to become a member. Now, if you go out to the Toastmasters website and you pull up the VP of membership and, and you look at the responsibilities and the skills learned, nowhere in that document does it say sales. Nowhere. It doesn't say sales. I'm not supposed to sell? It, I think it says recruitment. Yes, if, I re, if I read over it, you know, it, it's called recruitment, but it's really sales because... You're trying to show people the value. You're trying to get them to buy in and you're trying to get them to join. It's a sales thing. I think over time, sales has become a dirty word. If you notice in other industries, the word sales has been going away. They're not the car salesman anymore. They're an account manager or they're a business development executive or they're a customer success manager or a client relationship executive or a revenue rock star, or a deal weaver. <laughs> yes! <laughs> sales is a dirty word. But it shouldn't be. Now, I've been around Toastmasters since uh, 2009, and I developed my own idea of why people join Toastmasters. And... Uh, and I put them in three different buckets. And you can disagree with me or whatever, but it's just easier. We do, in Toastmasters, we do a lot of things in threes, you know? Uh, come with an opening paragraph, do little, three little topics, and then close at the end. So three reasons why I think people actually join Toastmasters. And the first one is, They're scared. Fear. They're scared 
and they panic. The thought of giving a speech in front of people, they can't do it. The fear of speaking. And you know what they say. Uh, they took a survey and people would rather die before they got up in front and give a speech. So fear, scared, panic, the fear of speaking is one reason why people join Toastmasters. I think the second, the second reason is language. I think people come here from other countries and they want to get better at the language. They want, they want to do better. They, if they get a job, they want to communicate better. They want to, uh, for me, I'm from Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn and I have a Brooklyn accent. And it still comes out, but I've gotten rid of a lot thanks to Toastmasters. I don't sound, if I want to sound like Tony Monero from Saturday Night Fever, I can. But for the most part, I don't. People from New York can still hear my accent. Other people, not so much. But the language of trying to do better with the language. A lot of folks, that's what they're looking for Toastmasters, is I, I want to get better at my language. Number three is, I call it ambition. They have a job and they want to get ahead. They want to do better. They, they want to cut ahead of the line. And how do you do that? Uh, you do better presentations. You have better leadership skills. You do the things that you need to get ahead at the office. If I do better presentations, I'll get more opportunity to uh, get in front of people. And then I'll move ahead. So I call it ambition. People are ambitious. They want to get ahead. Now, going back to the VPs uh, who didn't get back to me, I don't blame them so much. I kind of say to myself, well, I bet you dollars to donuts, they don't have a process. They're probably lacking a process. And that if you don't have a process, you don't know what the next steps are. And if you did know what the next steps are, you probably would get back to me in a timely manner. And there's a managerial expert, long, long time managerial expert, uh, W. Edwards Deming, who said, if you can't describe what you're doing as a process, you don't know what you're doing. Basically, well, I get back to you, then what? Uh, what do I do next? Uh, if you don't know what the process is, you're not, you're not going to get ahead. And the, and the second thing he said was 85% of the reasons for failure are deficiencies in the systems and processes rather than the employee. So, again, I think that people don't get back to me because they don't have a process. And that's, that's something that we could change. And then that's something that, that if we change that inside the clubs, I think that will make a big difference. So, ask yourself, your VPs out there. And um, I don't know, David, let's... I mean, it's not a big group. If people want to chime in, let me ask the questions. The folks out there, do you have a, a club? Does your club have a process for process engagement before the meeting? Or process prospect engagement at the meeting and process prospect outreach after the meeting? Before, during, and after. Anybody want to chime in? I know everybody's off. Everybody's gone. It's just me and you, David. Peter. Did I, I kill everybody at the it. beginning? <laughs> We're here with you. Are We're we? here. We are here. There you go. I can share a little bit. For the engagement before the meeting in uh -huh. one of my clubs, Two of my clubs, we start the meeting early. We we are we are online right now. So this is talking about the virtual environment. Right. We start the meeting early. We also before you know, we also let our guests know that we're going to start the meeting early so that they're welcome to join. And in that time frame, 
they get to ask us any questions. We engage. We just have conversations. And we're just just socializing, really. Mm -hmm. And that that can be accomplished in the in-person environment as well. Okay. That's great during, to hear. Yeah, during the meeting, the before we get in, we always welcome the guests. We invite them to just share a little bit about themselves, how they heard about us, uh -huh. that good stuff. And of course, before we end, we engage them, maybe see if they want to do table topics after, after a, a veteran Toastmasters has demonstrated how it's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we close the meeting again, we ask them, what right. do you think about the meeting? Any questions? Right. After the meeting, we send out our email, which has, in the case of lunchtime, our VP membership sends out this wonderful email that has a lot of information, including the application form. There you go. That's there what we go. do, sir. Back to you. All right. That's, that's awesome. I'm going to ask you one more thing because I think this is important. Are well, these processes written down and in a folder? And that, that is an excellent question. <laughs> we, we, we don't have all of it written down. I, I, I must confess we don't have okay. all of it written down. And here, here's the reason why, okay? The reason I, I say that is because what happens if tomorrow you get transferred to California, the folks at District 101 out there in Silicon Valley, my friends out there who didn't show up this morning. I know you're working. I know. I know. But uh, you went out there and then you said, well, I can't be VP of membership anymore at the club. How do you transfer that? Uh, for example, uh, I'm at Born Toastmasters. I'm the VP of PR, right? And uh, I do the social media and stuff, and I found out that I don't have the password to the LinkedIn account. I went back to each and every VP of PR prior to myself. Nobody knows it. Nobody has the, any idea what the pa password is. And so if I don't have the password to the LinkedIn account, LinkedIn won't give it to me. And so we're out of luck. I, I mean, that's what happens. I'm locked out of LinkedIn. I, you know, and there's history there and a, a whole bunch of stuff and, and I can't get to it. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to build a new one because I have no choice. But if these processes were written down, passwords given away to the next person in line, life would be a lot easier. And I know somebody has to take, has to take the reins and get that done, but it's easier when you have the processes in place and you don't have to recreate them every six months or every year, depending on the club. Make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I'll say this, that we've talked about that and there is a place in Free Tales Host to do that and we are going to, to get that stuff documented. There you go, good to hear. Anybody else before I move on? Anybody got something to say? Because you can say it. All right, LaDonna. Um, yep. For my club, we do the same exact thing of greeting, starting earlier, greet them through the meetings, invite them to do table topics, as well as reach out to them after the meeting by sending them an email. We also, before the meeting starts, I would say two or three days before that, we send them another meeting to remind them we, you know, you came to the last meeting, our next one's coming up in case you would like to join us for the, in the next couple of days. Um, we do have a place where we are documenting our emails to, to the point that when the next person comes up, they know what kind of email they need to send out, regardless uh, which way it comes in. If they come to a meeting or they send a request, hey, I've heard about you. I'd like to know more information. We have like a standard format that we use that we do document. It's in Google Docs that we share amongst all the officers that are there. Awesome. You're doing the right things. Are you on track to be a distinguished club? <laughs> yep. You see? No, no we're not. <laughs> no, oh, you're we're not? not? No. <laughs> okay, we'll get to that later. We're going to find out what's going on. All right. Now, go back to uh, my good folks at Glen Gary, Glen Ross. 
This is one of the things that Blake did. As you all know, they have a sales contest. As you all know, the first prize is a Cadillac Eldorado. Second prize is a set of steak knives. <laughs> I'm going to give you a quote. Uh, I met this man a few weeks ago, and I'll get to that a little later, but his name is Dr. Nito Cobain. He's president of High Point University. And he said, uh, your present circumstance don't determine where you can go. They merely determine where you start. And so I think it's a good time for us to start here. You know, where are you at right now? And let's let's figure out where you need to get to and how do we get there? Uh, we want to start now, what you need and how to get there. Uh, so if you're a club and you're in that... Uh, 12 member range, you know, you're going to have to get eight to get to 20. Let's figure out how do we get those eight. Let's figure out how we get those four. Let's figure out how we get those 12. Let's see what we need to do to get there. And the way to do that is by having a process. You have to take care of the processes. You have to, what are your processes before the meeting, during the meeting, after the meeting? What's your onboarding process for people who join that day? Do they just fill out the application? You forget about them? What, what are you doing to take care of those folks? And then what are you doing to retain them? Because I hear a lot, I hear this a lot that uh, after they join, uh, nobody keeps up with them. And if you don't keep up with them, if the only time they keep you keep up with them is when, oh, I need another check in six months, they're gonna say, hey, you know what? I need it's gonna be hard for me to do. But if you keep up with them and they do the things that are necessary, they see the value of what Toastmasters provide, then your retention is gonna take care of itself because they're gonna join back. So let's talk about what happens before the meeting. Uh, it's the initial outreach. And that could be an email, that could be in person, that could be uh, a referral. Somebody sent somebody over to you because you, you know them. It could be a blind email, you know, uh, I went a little too far, but the initial outreach, we have to get back to those people in a timely manner. If it's an email, write them back. Hey, glad you had the time to uh, write us an email. Uh, we'd love to have you at our club meeting. But before you send that meeting out, I want you, uh, uh, that email out, I want you to explore a little bit because you need to find out why do they want to come? Why, why Toastmasters? What, why do you want to join Toastmasters? I, I would say that. Why, why are you thinking of Toastmasters? And this is in person too. If you meet this person at a coffee house or something like that, why, why do you think you need Toastmasters? What problem are you facing and what are your challenges? Obviously, if they want to come to Toastmasters, they have a problem. And if they have a problem, it probably fits in one of those three buckets I explained earlier. It's because of fear, uh, it's because of the language, or it's because it's ambition. And if you have that, and you put those people in three buckets, it'll be a lot easier for you to verify what they need, what their needs are. And when you speak to the prospect, don't talk, listen intently. Listen to what they have to say. Don't give them any suggestions. Find out what their issues are. And then after that, invite them to the meeting and what to expect at a meeting. This is what's going to happen. And before they show up to the meeting, let the membership know you're having a guest coming. If they don't know that a guest is coming and they're surprised, it looks like, oh, I didn't know you were coming. But your VP of membership didn't tell you I was coming? Am I not that important? <laughs> they, should, they should know that the guest is coming. And let me tell you why it's all important. Because, like I said earlier, you're the VP of membership. And actually, you're the salesperson. And one of the guys in my club, uh, Norm Wood, of the new Norm, he does a lot of uh, consulting. And he gave me this, and he said I could use it, so I'm going to use it tonight. Uh, when people, uh, when a buyer is in the decision-making process, 
These are the things they look at. Now, the company, which is Toastmasters, they're looking at that. The product, which is your club, they're looking at that. They're looking at price, and they're looking at the time to buy. Right there, company, product, price, and buy. Well, if they're coming to you, they've already bought into Toastmasters for some reason or another. The product, you're the club. That's where they're going to get Toastmasters. They kind of bought into that too. The price, price has never been an issue. It's two cups of coffee a month for Toastmasters. I mean, they're everybody going to afford that. Don't go to Starbucks for two days. I mean, seriously. And the time to buy, if they're reaching out to you, the time to buy is now. So where's what's left? The salesperson. You are the salesperson. You have to convince them on what the reasons are to join the club. But if you do the next thing, it'll be real easy to, for you to figure that out. Because Norma also provided me is ask open-ended questions. Tell me about the issues you're having with your speaking. Please explain what leadership problems you're having at work. Describe to me why you think you, you're, you're scared of speaking in front of people. Tell me more about this. How do you see this? Who, where, what, how? Ask these questions. Ask open-ended questions to the person. And you'll get a lot of information there. And the more information you get, the easier it's going to be to solve their problem. Now let's get to the meeting. So we're at the meeting. What is your prospect experience like at the meeting? Anybody want to tell me what's going on there? Nobody? You don't have to. I'll just keep on going. I think yeah. at, at, at the meeting, you want to make sure all of the roles are covered. So when you have guests, they're not looking at the club as so why am I here? Because they don't know what they're doing. But if all your roles are covered and you project a professional image to them, they're more apt to enjoy the meeting and to return. Absolutely. And now, explain the roles to them. Exactly. Basically, it shows that you're buttoned up. And if you're not buttoned up, that'll show. Exactly. Anybody else? Okay. In the prospect experience, this is what happens. You only have one chance to make a good first impression. If you blow it, you blow it. So you don't want to blow it. Just like what Pamela said. You have to have all your speakers, all your evaluators, all your table topics, folks in line, everything on the agenda has to be top notch. Let me ask you this. Are your guests treated like VIPs when they show up to, to your meetings? Think about that. And there's a reason why I asked that question. Um, I told you before that quote by Dr. Nito Cobain. Well, I had the opportunity a couple of weeks ago. He's a, he is a successful businessman. He is a legend in the speaking industry. And he's also president of High Point University. And uh, I had the opportunity to interview him a few weeks ago because of NSA. I'm the chapter historian. And he is the winner of a Cabot Award. And our chapters had six Cabot Award winners. Two have passed away, but there's four left. And I said, I need to interview these, these people. And so I uh, I wrote him. He got back to me. He said, would love to do an interview. I said, okay. He said, get with my assistant, uh, Jeannie. Jeannie will set everything up for you. I said, great. I got with Jeannie. I sent her an email. She got back to me the same day. We set a date. Uh, everything's aligned. She sent me where to be, what time, what I needed to bring, uh, what was I bringing, and then uh, if I needed any help. So I had an 11 o'clock appointment. I think it was on a Thursday. And I uh, takes me an hour and a half to get there. So I had to leave at uh, 
nine thirty, but I left at eight o'clock in the morning because I don't want to be late. I want to be early because if you're not early, you're late. So I left, and halfway there, an eighteen wheeler cut me off really bad, really bad, and uh, I was almost in his. I was almost his cargo, but I slammed on the brakes and. But I was pretty shaken up. If a guy from Brooklyn, and I didn't even retaliate. That's that's the amazing thing for me. Didn't even didn't even cut him off back or anything like that. I just said, no, I I'm going to High Point. Let's let's stay on. But I was I was jittery. I was shook up, and uh, I got there. And when I got there, I got to the gate, and I was greeted by the attendant, and I said, uh, I'm here to see Jermaine, the sergeant at arms. And she wasn't sure who Jermaine was, so she called the security officer in, and uh, the security officer said, uh, hold on a second. Uh, who are you here to see? I said, President Dr. Nito Cobain. She goes, hold on one second. She went in, made a phone call, came right out. We're, we're glad to have you here today. Uh, it's such an amazing day. We're glad you're here with us. I want you to drive up to that gazebo, make a left. There's some parking spaces up there for you. And I said, great. Uh, well, there were parking spaces. And I guess I I didn't realize it, but what was set aside for me? It said, reserve parking for special guests. Welcome, Mr. Peter at Joe Cities. And you know what blew me away? My last name was spelled correctly. That that doesn't happen. <laughs> Does not happen, okay, folks? And uh, I was blown away. And then... I went to the back of my car to unload, and I saw out of the corner of my eye, I saw another security officer, and he came up to me. I said, are you Jermaine? He said, yes, I am. And I said, well, good to meet you. Uh, I told Jeannie I didn't need any help. I got a tripod, and, I, and she goes, I'm sorry. Look, I came out to greet you, but I can't come back empty-handed. You need to give me something to carry back, because I can't let you do that. <laughs> I said, okay. So I gave him my tripod and my water bottle and went on our way. He put me in a nice conference room, which had snacks and coffee and water. And then she said, Jeannie will be in in a few minutes to take care of you. Jeannie came in and we talked a little about her history. Jermaine has been there 14 years. Jeannie's been there seven. They both love their jobs. And uh, they took, and she said, uh, just wait here a second. Dr. Cobain is on a conference call and he'll be back. He'll be here in a, in a couple of minutes. And he was in a couple of minutes. And then I greeted him and we did the interview. Now, here's the thing. Before I met Nito Cobain, I met four different people at High Point University. And they treated me like gold. They didn't know who I was. They had no idea what I was doing there. But they treated like me like a VIP. The university treated me like a VIP. When's the last time you parked in a parking space that had your name on it in lights? Maybe never. But they treated me like a VIP. And the reason for that goes back to Dr. Cobain. Everywhere on that, on that campus, you'll see signs that says, choose to be extraordinary. Choose to be extraordinary. Yes, choose to be extraordinary. You could be extraordinary or you could be mediocre. It's your choice. Why don't you choose to be extraordinary? So when you have prospects coming to your meeting, are you treating them like VIPs? They should be treated like VIPs because it's easier for you to sell them if you do that. Because if you don't treat them like VIPs, they're going to say, well, I don't feel comfortable here. So are you treating them like VIPs? Now, I brought my board Morgan up here, right? We're going to do a little role play if you give us a second. And this is for, well, let's see. You want to get here? All right, we'll do it this way. All right. Uh, we're going to do this role play of a member of, of a prospect coming to a meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. And no email, no nothing. They just showed up. Okay. Well, hi, how are you? 
Good. How are you doing? Hey, I'm Peter. Nice to meet you, Peter. I'm Morgan. You're Morgan. Hey. Nice. So, how, uh, how how'd you find board Toastmasters here today? Um, I actually was hanging out on LinkedIn. I saw one of your posts. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So nobody referred you. Nobody referred me. Okay, so you're just blind. Okay. Well, let me tell you a little something about our club. Okay. Uh, this club is awesome. Oh, really? Yeah. Let me tell you. We get this club has five DTMs. Okay. Uh, three of our members are previous okay. district directors. I mean, top notch. We have top notch people here. We have business people here. It's this, this is great. This is a great place. If you go to the Toastmasters Club, this is it. Okay. Okay. Just to let you know. All right. You don't have to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, we're going to start the meeting in about five minutes. Okay. But I need to take care of a little. A little business here before mm -hmm. I gotta take care of one thing. So if you hang out here, okay. the meeting will start. Check it out. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get back with you after the meeting and you tell me what, what you thought and we'll go from there. Okay. Did that work for you? Yeah. Well we have some time for questions. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Awesome. Great. Now that was role play. I thought that went pretty well, don't you? What do you think? <laughs> Carlene says, yes, all right. She gave you a thumbs up. Awesome. <laughs> David, why not? What what's wrong with what, what was wrong with this role play? Uh well I gee, Peter, um, you you <laughs> you talked about a lot of other people. You didn't really talk to your prospect. You used a lot of terms that your prospect may have no idea what they mean and probably doesn't care right now. You ponder off. Hey, I got to go do something else. Just to uh, hang around here. I'm not sure you created the most uh, a connection point. I don't think you really even asked her what she was doing there or what she was trying to accomplish. That's exactly. right. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> right. Right. You didn't right. ask her anything about herself. Okay. Anybody else? I think that you sold the club so high that she's nervous that I will not be able to uh, not compete, but I won't be able to catch on because the what's the DTM? They're already to the top. So I'm down here by myself. Who? How does it help the everyday person that would like to become a DT, uh, DTM? And oh, yeah. by the way, what is a DTM? Yeah. <laughs> It's driving to Montana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what that means. That's right. <laughs> so, Ed, yeah, you came on there for a second. Oh, uh, yeah, you got to go for mute. Well, Ed's, ha Ed's having some issues. So, uh, but you absolutely... 100% spot on in that thing. I was selling the club, figuring that if I sell the club. Now, let me explain something to you. I was at a Toastmasters for a while in 2015. I went looking for a club. And I said, I'm going to go look at three clubs. That first club, that's exactly what happened to me, that first club. I walked into a place, right? And I nobody greeted me. I sat in the back. And then this guy walks in, comes to meet everybody else, and somebody somebody told him, pointed at me, and he came to talk to me. He was the VP of membership. And somebody said to him, hey, I think we got a guest. You better go talk to him. <laughs> and so he tells me about the club, tells me about this. And I'm like, and, and I'm a previous Toastmaster. <laughs> so did I go back to that club? No, no, absolutely not. Now we're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it again. I'm going to see if I can get a little better at doing this. Well, hi. How are you? I'm Peter. Good. Nice to meet you. I'm Morgan. Morgan, what's going on today? What, what brings you here at the uh, Board Toastmasters today? Well, I just got a new job. Uh huh. It's my first job. Okay. And I am going to have to present in front of crowds uh -huh. and i'm actually really nervous to talk in front of people okay let me ask you this mm -hmm. are, you, are you are you nervous in front of folks is it fear of 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 uh of speaking? of speaking 
yes. And also I'm going to be in an office with high level executives. So I want to just make sure. Okay. I get my language correct and my timing correct. On All right. So if, if correct me if I'm, if I'm hearing you wrong, but I hear you saying that you, you're a little nervous about getting in front of group mm -hmm. and that you want to do well, because if you do well in front of your bosses, mm -hmm. that you can move on down the road. Yes. Okay. So here, here's, let me tell you about two things. We have two people in this club. Mm -hmm. Okay. One, the first one, she came to Toastmasters. She did her icebreaker. Her, her icebreaker, that's your first speech. Okay. It's supposed to be four to six minutes long. Mm -hmm. She got up, she spoke for 20 seconds and sat down. That's how scared she was. That's kind of me. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so the evaluator said to her, hey, you did a great job and everything. You only spoke for 20 seconds, but next time I want you to speak for 40 seconds. Okay. You know what she's doing today? What's she doing? She's today? teaching class at a community college. As a professor? Yes. In front of? In front of people. In front of people. All day long. Wow. And then we have another young lady, a little bit older than you, but she wanted to get better at her job. Do you know she's gotten two promotions already because of Toastmasters? No way. At her work? Yeah. That's kind of my position too. Okay. Well, look, uh, we're going to start the meeting. I'm going to introduce you to those two people. Okay. You get to know them better. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I'm going to come back and get you after the meeting and we'll talk. Okay. And we'll go from there. Is that a plan? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Great to meet Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. All right. How was that? That, that a little better? <laughs> so, so many times uh, we go to be in, 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 here, here's the thing, and, and we do it at our club too. We have a guest come in, and not everybody introduces themselves. Not everybody knows what's going on with them. Uh, you know, no fault of no fault of anybody, but it's the membership has to be cognizant if they don't if they see a new person there. For the most part, everybody in our club goes gravitates to them and introduces themselves. Sometimes if we have a lot of people that let me go back to that situation where I, I went to the uh, I went to that club and they didn't even take care of me. I then went to Apex Toastmasters. I didn't know I did know a few people there because of my Toastmasters history. But 10 different people walked up to me at that meeting and introduced themselves. They didn't know who I was. They didn't know where I came from, what I was doing, but they all asked me and they asked me what I was trying to do and they all tried to help me. And that's what you want in your club. That's the way you want it done. So what is that VIP experience that you're providing your club? And it's gotta be part of the process because if it's not part of the process, it may happen sometimes, it may not happen other times, okay? If you're the VP of membership, let people know, hey, uh, we Ed, Ed is our VP of membership at Board Toastmasters. Him and I talked the other day. We have we have a, a longtime friend, uh, Katie Gales, who's coming tomorrow to our meeting. And we told some folks, hey, Katie's coming. Be there. Be prepared. You know, uh, she's going to check us out, and we want to be ready. So we, we know it's coming. If you know something's going to happen, tell the membership. One more, that's it. If you thank you. We're good? Thank you. Big hand from Morgan. Yay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, sir. So that's our role play for the for the night. Uh how are we doing on time? Anybody need a break? Or we just keep on going. Any questions so far? Yeah, how about a five-minute break? All right, we take five minutes, and that should bring us to the top of the hour. Well, almost at the top of the hour. Just come back in, in five minutes. That'd be good? All right. All right, Carly, Carly's going to tell us a story. She, we're back. Carly's going to tell us a story. Okay, Carly. <laughs> Years ago, when I served as Division G Director, I was visiting, I was in Greensboro for a work-related conference. 
we had a good break and I decided to visit the local Toastmasters club there. I walked in and no one, absolutely no one engaged me. And, and, and that is the reason that I gave the thumbs up for your first role play because you engaged the, the guest. I, I think any level of engagement is important. Mm -hmm. We were in that meeting, the only, I, I'm telling you, the meeting started in Greensboro. No one acknowledged me. I'm sitting, I'm a total stranger. Don't even <laughs> live in Greensboro. So there's no way anybody there is going to know me. But so total stranger, I'm in this meeting and I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Nobody's, in, <laughs> nobody's speaking to me about anything. At some point there were, I think it was table topics and I jumped right on in. And I introduced my and I introduced myself. And that was when it was like, oh, it was like people were like, now, oh my gosh. It's like, oh, no, that is not the time for you to respond. The right. time was when I walked in that room and you were all chit-chatting, and I was just there and nobody engaged me. So again, the reason I put the thumbs up for your first role play is just that there was engagement. We have to engage our guests, even if we don't have the exact skill level of whatever questions, but if we have the member survey form, that's another thing we can share, but just that engagement is critical. Just wanted to share that. <laughs> so that's, that, that's awesome, Carleen. I, I, I have another good friend who's a speaker. Her name is uh, Wendy Gates Corbett, and she talks about belonging. And, and I had coffee with her, and she talks about how employees who want to be belong to their company they want to be treated as they're a member of of the family sort of and and a lot of times uh some clubs have been around a long time that they that they don't know how to bring other people into the club you know and and they don't do the things that are necessary uh a lot of times people join a club is because they want to be part of something and if they're not part of it, then then you're not meeting their needs. They want they want to be they want to be together with, with people. And so that's I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you put yourself out there. You did the tabletop and they figured out who you were, like oops, oops. <laughs> but it shouldn't come to that. You know, you should engage the folks that show up. Well, I'll keep on going here because we got half an hour left. And I want to get, you know, if we have any questions along the way, just ask them. We did the role play. And um, so during the meeting, you know, do introductions. Uh, make sure they uh, your prospect meets the right people. Uh, you know, I got Morgan. I'm going to introduce her to two people that are going to in in her situation, in, in her ambition, in her in her trying to deal with her fear. I, I hooked her up with people who are are do are in that same boat, so they could relate. Club members should introduce themselves to the guest. Expl Pamela said explanation of the roles for the prospect. That's important. What is going on? So if you have a, if you have a guest, make sure if you're the Toastmaster that you tell the folks, explain your role. A lot of times we don't explain our roles, but when there's a guest there, explain your role. A chance for thoughts by the prospect. Uh, Ed's real good at that. He always, at the end of the meeting, he goes to the prospect and says, hey, would you stand up? And if you can, let us know what you thought. Just, just some thoughts. That way, whatever they say, then we could go back with them and say, well, you know, I hear what you're saying, and we think we could do this, this, and this for you. And the final thing at the meeting is the close. Now, this is where I vary with a lot of people. And, and the reason for that is my Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross experience. But um, during a close, here's an opportunity for questions. What did you think about the meeting? Uh, ask those open-ended questions. What do you think about the meeting? You think this is going to help you... Uh, get to where you need to go? Is this going to help you with your fears? Is this going to help you with your ambition? Uh, 
can we solve their problem? They may have a specific problem. And what I learned over time, if you can't solve their problem, tell them we can't solve your problem. We think we should go somewhere else. Because if you tell somebody you can solve their problem and, and you don't, then that's not good. Uh, I remember a long time ago when, when I was dealing with the radio station and, and trying to figure out if they, were the right, if they could deliver the right audience. And the rep came back to me and said, I don't think this is good. I don't think we should be on this by. We're going to pass. That was like gold. I've always trusted that man after that. He became a trusted advisor because he let he didn't go after the business. He didn't deserve it. He said, you're better off spending your money somewhere else. So can we solve that problem? If we can, let's do it. If we can't, let's also tell them that. Now, here's the thing. I would already have the application filled out. If I, if, if I talk to them, I would have their name, their address, all that stuff filled out, how much it's going to cost. All they have to do is sign on the line that is dotted. Okay? Have it all done. Don't give the application. Fill it out. They're going to sit there. Have it all done for them. <laughs> right? If they're here, they're ready to buy. And then one of the things I remember at Apex Toastmasters that we used to do a lot is uh, after the meetings, we used to go to uh, uh, to a restaurant and, and have some food and have some drink afterwards. And that helps in the camaraderie of the club. So you might want to think about if, if that's something that you could do. Hey, we're going to go to Doherty's. We're going to, we're going to have some pops and, and some food. And would you like to join us? Oh, absolutely. That helps. Now, when it comes to the prospect, uh, Sharon Hill's not here, but I, I'm going to use Sharon as an example. And she always said that when she gets a prospect, she likes for that prospect to come several times to the club. And she also likes for them to, to check out some other clubs to make sure they're, they're right. And then make that decision to make sure that they're joining the right club. And that's all well and good. And that's great for retention down the road because if you're getting the right person for your club. But here, we just explained that we need to get distinguished and everything. I'm, I'm of the different aspect of A, B, C, always, A, always, B, B, C, closing, always be closing, always be closing. I want that member to come to my club, okay? I don't want them going to the other club. If if you go buy a car, I, I, I live in Apex right near the auto park and everything. And if I go to Hendrick Toyota and I'm buying a Camry and I got the color, I got the engine, I got the price, everything's great. And I'm about to sign that salesman says, hey, you know what? I think you better be right on this piece of business. So I think you should go to Leith and I think you should go to Crossroads, check them out. Then if it's okay, then they come back and buy this. No, that would never happen at a car dealership. <laughs> why is why does that happen to Toastmasters? I want them to come to my club. Why send them to another club? They can get the same thing from our club, right? So I'm trying to close that person. This is closing the sale. What's your objection if they don't if they have an objection? What's your objection? We want we we want to counter it. Look, here's the thing. A guy don't walk on the lot unless he wants to buy. That person came to our meeting. They're interested. <laughs> you sell them. I'm there. I need the members. I need to be distinguished. Grab them. Have that application say, you know, it's only $54 or whatever, whatever it costs to join your club. All you have to do is give me a check. We can take PayPal. We can do Square. We can do whatever you want. Six months. Hey, lock them in. That's that's my way of doing it. Anytime I'm always seeing a new member, I'm always saying, so you're going to join? Oh, uh, well, why not? Why not? Join. Follow up after the meeting. 
Thank you. Always say thank you. Send them a card. Send them a note card. Handwritten. Have, have folks email and calls from members. Hey, great to see you. Great to meet you. Make them feel welcome. When are you coming back for another visit? Put them on the mailing list. So that way they know what's going on at your club. Follow up with a coffee meeting. You're the VP of membership. If they didn't join that night, next week, invite them for coffee. What's going on? How can we get you in the club? And the last process is the onboarding process, which is, hey, we're going to introduce you to Pathways. This is how we, we get you to be a better speaker. We're going to give you a mentor. This person is going to follow you. Maybe with Morgan, I'm going to hook him up with, with, with the person who was, who was very uh, scared of speaking. They share that in common. She could, she could be a mentor. And have some fun. Hey, it, at the end of the day, this is all about, I know we, get, we need to make our numbers and everything, but Toastmasters is fun. It's a good time. Let's make it a good time. And one thing that not a lot of people do, but you should do, is do that re retention check that I talked about earlier. What's the initial plan, the VP of education? What's the plan for this person coming in? Where do you think they should be in, in one month, three months, six months? Figure that out. Are they on track? Follow up with them. Make sure they're on track. And then are they getting the awards and the retention? Because if they're happy, they're, they're getting to what they need, they'll be fine. Now, let's, let's close the sale. And how, how do you do that? Well, I'm not sure if I want to be a member. I really don't know. I, you know, I, I, whatever it is, what are the objections or the roadblocks? What's stopping you from joining today? Whatever they say, provide all solutions or alternatives. And then always go back. You already did your homework on them. You're trying to figure I, I, I found out from Morgan. She wants to get over fear and she wants to be better at work. So repeat back to them that <clears throat> you initially told me that you want to get over your fear of speaking and you want to look good in front of your bosses. If you come to Toastmasters, you're going to accomplish that. Repeat back to them the problem that you, they wanted to solve and that you're going to solve it. Now, sometimes it's time or distance. I had a friend I was trying to get him with, uh, in Charlotte, I was trying to get him with a Toastmasters club, but he said, man, it's real far. I don't think I could go to that one. Okay. If that's the case, if you have a, uh, if you have a prospect come in and they, they have issues with time or I can't make it because it's me, refer them to another club. Hey, maybe we can't help you, but hey, this club is closer to your house, or I know somebody at this club that could take care of you. Make that referral to another club so they can get them. Don't leave them hanging. Maybe they have an issue with money. I figured out what, it's two cups of Starbucks coffee. I mean, the kids today, what, I, they spent $10 a cup of coffee. <laughs> hey, I, really? You could get Toastmasters for a whole year. <laughs> So money shouldn't be an issue. Commitment. Hey, you got a fear of commitment? Try it for six months. It's not going to kill you. You got nothing to lose. Take care of their objections. Now, I did a thing. Uh, why is Toastmasters membership down? Like other associations, like other clubs, like other things, membership down is down all over. But... I went out and asked my buddy, uh, Chat GPT, what are the reasons membership is down? Number one, COVID-19, right? Everybody knows that. But hey, COVID-19 is over, so I you can't use that anymore. Changes in work schedules because people were remote, people are, you know, getting back together. Let me tell you something about board Toastmasters. Uh, I joined last April of last year. They were in person. 
April of last year, they were in person. That's why I joined because I like in person. So are you getting back to in person? Ask yourself that. This changes the communications pattern. This is a generational thing. You know, we like to talk, but the young kids like to uh, email and chat and text and all that stuff. You have to take that into consideration when you're doing your communications. Lack of awareness. Do people know you exist? A lot of times they don't. So it's a lack of awareness. Difficulty adapting to virtual. Uh, I was talking to my wife, Jean Ann, about this. And she says, you know what? The thing with Toastmasters is you have a lot of ritualistic things that go on. You know, at district conferences, they had the parade of flags. How do you do the parade of flags virtually? I know you try, but it's not the same. But uh, the gauntlet, the DTM gauntlet. I never did my DTM gauntlet because I, I was virtual. Uh, I missed out on that. But... We do kind of the same things that we miss out on being together. You know, how do we adapt to that virtually? And I think you guys did a good job because I saw an email the other day saying that, hey, we need your flag so we can do the parade of flags. So we keep on doing those ritualistic things that we need to get that we need to get done. And another thing is the aging membership. A lot of Toastmasters are a lot older. How do we get the younger members back into thing? Now, now the good news there is. Uh, you know, I said Donald Barnes the other day, but his wife Rhonda called me and she goes, would you come down to Fayetteville? Uh, we're having an awards banquet for our youth, Toastmasters Youth Leadership Program. We have nine kids graduating and we'd like you to be the, the speaker uh, for that night. And I said, absolutely. Absolutely. Help the young kids out because they're the ones that are going to keep Toastmasters going. So how do we get the younger members back in? One of the things I always say is, who's your sales team? When when you uh, became VP of membership, did you put together a sales team? Did you? Yes, no? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> no? You didn't put together a sales team? Okay. Pamela, I'm going to help you out tonight. Because I'm going to give you a trick for your sales team. I'm going to tell you how to increase prospects by 10 times. Okay? Uh, hold on a second. Yeah. I'm going to tell you how. All right. So let's say you're a club and you have 10 members. Okay? And by June, you need another 10 members to be distinguished. Okay? So you have 10 members. Your sales team is your membership. You tell your membership twice a month, you have to bring a guest. You have to, and you have to vet them. You have to find somebody that needs some help. And you say, you, as part of the membership, you have to bring in two guests. All right, let's say they bring in two guests each. So that's 20 prospects coming to your meeting in the month of March, okay? You do it again, March, April, May, June. That's 80 prospects. When I did this, I was looking at six months. So it's over six months. If you did that January through June, you would have 120 prospects, okay? You think you could close 10% of those prospects to join the club? If you if you close 10% of those prospects, you would have 12 new members. 12 plus 10 is 22. You just became distinguished. Right? Easy peasy. Your club is your membership, is your sales staff. Use your members to bring in guests. And you tell them they have to do it. Okay? Because we have to become distinguished. That's how you close deals. Hey, what happens if you get if you close 20%? <laughs> right? So that's how you do that. Your club membership is your sales team. Use them and use them wisely. 
Uh, as VP of membership, you need to collaborate with your other VPs. You really do. You have to collaborate with your president, your VP of education, your treasurer, secretary of arms. Ask yourself this, does your club have a niche? Okay, at Born Toastmasters, we have a niche. We are an advanced club and we help those in the speaking industry, those who or who want to be speakers, professional speakers, and those who own a business that need uh, more guidance in getting their message out through speaking. That's our niche. So we're looking for professionals. We're, we're an advanced club, okay? Now, you may be a bit beginner or an advanced club. If you're a corporate club, you have a niche there. It's your company. You should be able to reach out to the employees of that company and get members. Uh, maybe you have a lot of engineers in your in your club. Maybe that's your niche. I remember there was a club a long time ago. They did improv. That was their niche, comedy and improv. So what is your niche for your club that uh, you, you, can bring, you can bring to light and get people that way? What does your club excel at? Is it speaking or leadership? You know, I, I think through uh, every time in Toastmasters, we always talk about the speaking, we forget the leadership part. You know, I, I looked up leadership. Margaret, Margaret Thatcher was a Toastmaster. Uh, we had president, President Bill Clinton. He was a Toastmaster. So uh, a lot of important people have been Toastmasters. So is, is leadership important to you? Think about it that way. Uh, collaborate with your, with your VP of PR, okay? Because you have to market the club. If you market the club, you'll get more members. Are you out there in social media? I know we are. I know we're on Facebook. I know we're not on LinkedIn because I don't have the password, <laughs> you know? But uh, do we want to go on Instagram? Do we want to go on TikTok? Where wh where else can, can I go? What are the things that uh, we could do uh, marketing-wise, you know? And I, and I think I got to the end, so I missed some stuff here. But also, you know, you can market through Eventbrite or Meetup if you put ads out there. If you have somebody who's really a, a, a social media person in your club, they can probably do Facebook ads or LinkedIn ads really cheap. It won't cost you a lot of money, and you can get prospects there. So there's all kinds of things what you can do. We also have partnerships. Who 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 can you partner with? You know, at board, uh, you can partner with your venue. We have a, at board, our meetings are at the city club. What a great place! And we partner with them, and uh, and that's an opportunity to get members through the city club. Bedford Toastmasters, they're part of a neighborhood. They get a lot of their members through the neighborhood. You know, in a corporate club. You can get your employees, you can get vendors of, of the company to join. I mean, that's a place where you can get members. Uh, job fairs and transition group. I spoke with uh, with Anthony Sloan. He's a retired military guy in Jacksonville. They have a lot of job fairs for the military. He always asks, can I put up a table at the job fair, a Toastmasters table? Because then he tells a story on how Toastmasters helps him with his speaking and his leadership. And that helps them get better jobs. That's a place where you could go. Go to transition groups, uh, job transition groups. There's a lot of them out there. Maybe you could send one of your speakers over there and say, hey, let me talk to your group. I, I talked to Anthony. AMA Tri, I spoke to AMA Triangle. I talked to the transition group. I spoke there once. You know, you could bring your message there. Talk to other Toastmasters Club. Find out what they're doing. You know, if, if you're not doing well, go see the clubs that are doing well. See what they're doing. Go visit another club. It's not that hard. Uh, and they're happy to tell you what they're doing. They're happy to tell you what, what's working for them and what's not working for them. Go out and talk to them. Or maybe organize, get together with, with the Toastmasters have a golf outing or do something together where you can get with other Toastmasters and make it bigger and larger than life. Uh, uh, have some events. Have some events. Like 
we always done this month, there's five weeks in this month. And that happens four times a year. So in those months, we have a special meeting that fifth week. And that could be an open house. That could be a speech marathon. That could be a special, you know, uh, we've done it. Uh, we've done it twice so far. And the one time we had Deborah Mathias come in and she, she showed us the best practices on LinkedIn. And then there was another time we, uh, we did a table topics marathon. All we did was table topics. And we invited all the board Toastmasters alumni to come. And a lot of them came back. That's the best thing. And Ed, Ed knew this. I got this from Ed. Uh, I did not know this. In the free toast host, if, if you go down at the bottom somewhere, there's like an alumni button. All previous members are there. Ed, can you explain that a little better than I can? Because I didn't do it. You did it. I did not do it. Free Toast Host did it. But there's <laughs> a group there. Whenever a member leaves your club, then they go into the previous members group. And it's just the whole list of previous members that uh, have been members of your club. And um, it's a handy way to get in touch with them. And sometimes the email, the emails don't work that they left there, but it's, you know, it's a good shot to to start with. So. Well, look at the picture. Look how many people we had show up at, yep. <laughs> at a meeting. The alumni came out that day. So uh, that's that's Peter. that's another thing you could do. Peter. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Ed is right. The the email list is is for the is former. It says former members. Yes. A, a whole email list is maintained for. There's the there's members. a whole lot of opportunity in that little email list, that little button mm -hmm. that nobody knows about. So mm -hmm. uh, check that out. Uh, last thing I want to want to talk about is uh, service to community. I mean, there's a lot of things we could do to serve the community that that are very helpful. Uh, you can talk to schools. Uh, they have career days. And this could be a way to get some younger folks in. And when you talk to the younger folks, their parents are there too, so they get to listen. And uh, I was at a Chamber of Commerce event and a lady asked, asked me, what, what do I do? I said, I'm a speaker. And she said, well, great. I want you to come to our career day and speak. Are you motivational speak? I said, yes, perfect. You got the spot <laughs> there. And the only reason I did it was because she was at Lufkin Road. That's where my kids went to middle school. So I'm going to be speaking to middle school students about careers. I'm good with that. I'm awesome. I'll do that all day long. I'm, I'm happy to do that. You know, uh, like I said, Rhonda, <laughs> Rhonda Barnes reached out to me. I've been talking to youth, youth leadership in, in, in favor. I'll take an hour and a half drive to do that. I mean, that's serving the community. Maybe you have some churches you could speak to. I mean, a lot of people I know had their Toastmasters meeting in churches. How can, how can you help them? I know a lot of them have transition groups and need speakers, so we can help them there. There's a lot of veterans and civics groups that uh, have speakers that you could go speak and maybe get members from those things. And uh, and never forget your Chamber of Commerce. Uh, that's always a good way to go. And the last thing I'll say is that you get more when you give more. And so more, the more you give, the more you're gonna get. So if you can do those things, I think you'd be on your way and you could close some sales and you get some new members and that's it. If you want to catch up with me, there's my email. You can find me on LinkedIn and Facebook. I don't do the gram. I want to do the TikTok, but I'm not there yet. So, David, I hope I accomplished your goal. If not, you don't have to pay me. <laughs> well, Peter, thank you so much. Uh, it was lively. It's always really informative. And you know, we will be sharing this through the beauty of 24-7 recording to others. Folks, uh, 
we still have uh, you. If you have questions, so let's take them now. Uh, well, we've still got Peter. I would like to say I would like to say that I enjoyed the presentation, learned a lot, and I wanted to give an experience to a club that I visited in Las Vegas, Nevada, and they were having it was a lunchtime club, and I was the area director at that time, and it was suggesting that we visit clubs in different areas, but I was able to visit that club. When I walked in the door, you would have thought I was Queen Elizabeth because <laughs> they rolled out the red carpet. They were having lunch. They just, and my son went with me. I mean, I just felt like I knew them forever. And it just made me feel as if I was a part of that group. I actually ended up joining that club when the pandemic came, you know, we were all virtual. But it was just such a rewarding experience that I was in a different state, a different club, didn't know anyone, and just felt as if I had been with them for the whole time. It's amazing how that works, right? Yeah. Remember that story about High Point University? I said, after my experience there, I had forgotten that I almost hit that truck because he cut me off, right? It's a change in your mindset, okay? If you have a positive mindset and, that, and that's what it is and you join the club, if you treat them like a VIP, they'll come knocking at your door all day long. <laughs> Let me just quickly say, I, thank you, Peter. Thank you so much for this. I do wanna point out that I did drop that new member experience form in the chat. It, it can be used to guide us in preparation for engaging the guests. If you look, just look at those questions and points for the new member, then you can you can adjust those to help interact with the prospects. I, I like that new member experience form. That's great. I didn't talk about anything to me because they do a really great job of, of of dot the I's and, and crossing the T's and everything. I think when there's some things like closing the sale that they don't, they don't teach you just because it's salesy and nobody wants to be salesy. Well, Peter, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, you might want to display that email address again. So if folks want to reach you with questions. I know you've uh, I'll, stuck. I'll put, it the, I'll put it in the chat. Great. Great. Thanks. Uh, we'll obviously be sharing this in other places. Peter, thank you for making room in your schedule. I know I'll be digesting this for a long time to come. And I know this will be valuable in the bigger mission. So thank you for what you've done with us today and all the energy you bring to everything you do. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me. Uh, if there's anything I could do, just reach out. I'd be happy to help. Uh, if you want me to come speak at your at your folks' meeting, let me know. You just have to take me to a nice lunch or dinner. That that'd be cost of <laughs> or, okay. or fine or a fine beverage. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Peter.